Legends of Tomorrow Episode 2 Pilot Part 2. Crazy, amazing episode, I gotta say. I really love this one a lot. I think, personally, I think this one I actually enjoyed a lot more than the first episode, which I thought was really well done. And it kind of blew my mind. I mean, they had a great, great opening for sure. It was an amazing action sequence in the opening. Um, we had a cool Damien Dark reference. Uh, we had a great joke. Uh, by Heat Wave, where he's like, you know, after Savage asks if there's a problem, he's like, yeah, Mr., you know, Master Race here um, is having an issue with us. That was really funny to me, but everything in this episode I thought was really well done. Like, once again, great, you know, over, I mean, it's, it's considered as a part of the pilot, so still a great opening um, for this series, and it's just really well done, and I loved it. Great action opening, um, freaking a firestorm absorbing an atomic blast, that was cool. That I really love. You know, the blast hits in like, that's the best result you could ever have in the universe. If an atom if a nuclear warhead goes off, that's not gonna happen. And it was just amazing the way they did it. And, you know, there's the explosion, he absorbs it um, in, I believe, point zero six seconds, um, Stein said. So that was really awesome. Stein, as well, in the beginning, <coughs> Um, even though they, you know, they kind of go through it and it's like Stein felt like he was the cause of the issue, you know, once things started to fall apart, but he's the reason they did get in, and that was a super badass moment for his character, and he mentions all the scimitar stuff, and I was like, that was really freaking sweet to see, you know, Dr. Stein, it's Dr. Stein, like, you just don't see that from his character, and it was really awesome, <coughs> excuse me, so I love that for sure, that was really amazing, and then we have... You know, Vandal Savage is actually there. They find him. They fail to stop him. Um, also, I love the fact that everyone was betting. It's like, you know, can we start with 100 million? And then you shoot a gun in the air, and it's like, we're shooting guns to bet. I was just like, that's just ridiculous. But it was, it was kind of funny. And then, you know, they fail to get Savage, but the future is tainted because a piece of race technology falls off of his arm, and that allows for them to reverse engineer it, and create more dangerous weapons for the future so that he can take over. And I love the way that they did it. It was like, all right, we have to figure this out, so we have to go somewhere else. Uh, they find out that there's actually a dagger that they, you know, the dagger that was used to kill uh, Hawkman and Hawkgirl. They find out where that dagger is, so we get Heatwave, Captain Cold, and we have Ray um, going in to steal this item, and then we get, like, an even greater dynamic out of those three characters, because Ray's like, hey, you know, we got what we came for, and he's like, no, you got what you came for, so we're gonna steal all this stuff, because we're thieves, and we want to be super freaking rich when we get back, you know, to our timeline, excuse me, and it was just great, like, I love the way that they did that, like, the dynamics of these characters, especially, uh, with Snart and Adam, because, just the way that they do it, where it's like, he's like, oh, you know, my family had the same defense system as a kid, so he went in and was like, boom, we're done. And then right after that, both Snart and Rory, and I'm going to most likely use their hero names because I prefer that way more uh, than calling them Rory and Snart. Uh, but, you know, both of them were like, you know, that's a dummy box, so, you know, the guards are going to be here faster than you can say rookie mistake. And I love the way they did it because normally when anyone says that, it's always like a couple seconds afterwards that the people show up, but this is like the first time I've ever seen them do it and be like, this, you know, that means the guards will be here faster than you can say Ricky mistake. And as soon as he was finishing that, we actually saw the guards right behind them. And I was like, for once, someone was actually accurate when they said that and they actually just made it happen as the people were saying it. Because no one ever does that. It's always like, oh, I have it done faster than this. And then, of course, it happens right after that, but it's like, why couldn't it just happen? in between them actually saying it, like for once someone could do that. And technically he still basically finished what he was saying, but I was like, at least it was, as he finished, they were right there. It was like, it wasn't like five seconds later, like I know, I know it's a figure of speech, but when it's in TV, you can make it as silly as that. You can literally do it faster than you can say this and then they actually show up in between, like in the middle of that word. So I just enjoyed it. That was a very minor thing to even remotely bring up during this review. But I noticed it, and it was like, no one does that, so it was cool. But once again, like, just that dynamic of, you know, we have this guy who's clearly a genius, but he doesn't know everything. 
and I thought it was cool and start talking about how he grew up and he, you know, like how he dodged a bullet where he could have been an engineer and stuff like that. And he grew up as a survivor. And, you know, that's how he knows some of the things that he knows. He might be a criminal, but he's a survivor. And as he puts it, he's not a criminal. He is, a, he's just a survivor. So I thought that was cool. Like that dynamic was really fun. And then we have, you know, the other side of the team, or at least part two of the team, because we had three sections with Hawkman and Hawk Girl doing their own thing. So they're in the house, and of course they get busted and screw up. So then we have Stein, um, Stein, Sarah, and I totally can't remember the guy's name, um, but the other half of Firestorm. They go meet young Stein, and he is super freaking hilarious. And he's like, you know, let's go smoke a doobie and stuff and talk about alpha particles and things like that. So that whole thing was just really fun. Like, they're laughing at him because he's like, I can't believe that used to be you. Um, when he first saw himself, he was like, wow, look at my hair, it's so thick and silky. That was the funniest thing to me, but it was a great episode for Stein's character and him, you know, kind of seeing himself when he's younger and realizing, like, man, I didn't change. I thought, you know, this experience and maturity, you know, that was within me is nothing. It was, it's kind of fabricated. I'm still exactly that person. I'm just a bit calmer about it, and, you know, I don't smoke as much weed, <laughs> yeah, I guess. So... Yeah, it, it was just crazy, and it was just like, I love that dynamic of his character, where he doubted himself, and I never thought we'd get that from, you know, Professor Stein, because he's Professor Stein, and they have added a new dynamic, like him being slightly cocky and stuff, they have kind of, they have definitely shown that in The Flash, but it, it definitely stands out here a bit more, because he is someone, he you know, as the oldest person on the team, he does have actual experience with the time periods, and he knows like, all right, I can say certain things, and I can bring, like, the scimitar stuff, that was perfect for that situation, but even though he might have the information, it doesn't mean he's the perfect one to use said information, or it doesn't mean that he can, you know, implement it perfectly, and I like that idea where, you know, he's, he is a genius, but he's not perfect, and, you know, he confronts that in himself, and it really kind of tears him down, but, of course, he gets a good pick-me-up from his partner, and it was just nice, and they, somehow it worked out. I honestly was like, I can't believe that even worked. Like, he thought he was never going to meet his wife, but ultimately he kind of sacrificed and was like, look, I can't tell you anything, just leave. Like, just get the heck out of here, here's your device, and go. And I was like, man, is he not, you know, is that going to you know mess up the timeline? And then Rip uh, kind of takes him back to the school, and it's like, you know, I convinced your younger self to go to the meeting. And so, you know, he's... The timeline still was fine for him, which I thought was really cool. And I was like, that was a cool moment. Uh, it was pretty cool of Rip to actually do that, because whole episode, Rip was just mad and just like, you know, he's even <laughs> when he saw Marty, he was just like, I, you know, I don't even want to ask. Like, I don't even care at this point. You guys just keep screwing up stuff. What does it matter? Like, I, I just don't care. He, just, he was just, he kind of took himself out of the enti entire equation in this episode. It was like, you guys don't listen? You're making me mad? I I'm just done. And so I, I just kind of love that about his character. He was only in, like, the beginning when he was mad at them, and then the Marty part where he was just like, I don't care to be mad. And then the end, really, you know, when they were kind of going through their solutions and uh, trying to figure out what they could do despite not having say or uh, completely stopped Vandal Savage. So it was cool. Like, his little, his couple of moments in this episode I actually thought were really good. Um, and then, of course... You know, I, I think I pretty much covered everything else I needed to before getting to the big thing about this episode, which is the fact that they killed off Hawkman, which I could not believe. They have, you know, we, we have Shira and Hawkman and, you know, Carter, which I'm glad they said that. The end scene, that's the only reason I remember his name, because Captain Cole was like, you know, we couldn't tell, you know, Carter from Adam, but you kill one of my crew and I'll, I'll get revenge. So I'm glad he said that because that's the only reason I remember Carter's name. But, you know, Carter and Shara have, you know, this entire episode is like, all right, we have this blade. It has this ancient writing on it that we don't really understand. Like, we know it, but we can't remember it. And Carter can't remember it because he's never had memories of their first life. He could never remember that far back, but Shara could. And so he's trying to help her work through it and stuff, and she's actually gaining you know, memories about how she actually loved him in previous lives, or especially, like, their first life, and I was like, okay, this is pretty cool, they're going through this dynamic, and he mentions, you know, they have, like, the really loving moment where he's like, you know, 
it might not be this lifetime, but I'll wait for you because I have, you know, centuries of memories of loving you, and I'm, I'll wait for you until the next one because you're worth the wait, which is a pretty, you know, cool thing to say, honestly. And, you know, they go through the destiny stuff and where she's like, you know, I don't want this to be destiny because that means I'm not thinking for myself. And I love that line. I thought that was actually really cool when he's like, you know, what part of destiny don't you get and she's like the part where I stop thinking for myself I thought that was a great line for a character I was like that is really awesome everyone ever should say that in everything from now on but it was really good and then they actually go up against them and I figured something I was like something's gonna happen I honestly thought they would kill him but he'd be brought back somehow or it wouldn't be permanent in some crazy regard and I was like okay he stabs him and I'm like how is this not working? Although he still kind of should have been killed, but I guess he has the power uh, within him. He kind of basically has super strength no matter what. But, or, or at least an enhanced body because of, I guess, the essence he takes from both of them each time he kills them. But I could not believe he actually killed them because when he stabbed them and he was reversing it, I was like, okay, he's going to reverse it and he's going to, like, stab them, but he's going to survive. Like, and then he stabbed them, and I was like, okay, it went, like, halfway through. He can live from that. And then he stabbed him, like, just all the way through. I was like, he's about to die. Like, they can't save him at this point. And they actually kill him. And I really thought they were going to kill both of them. And then it would be like, we just lost two members of our team. And we have to time travel in order to find them. Like, And I think that's still what they're going to do. I, because unless they kind of been playing us, like, with all these trailers, and Hawkman is just gone, and they aren't going to pick him up from a different timeline... That's going to be crazy. If she's just by herself now, that's nuts. Which, I, I kind of don't want that. I want them. I want it to be Hawkman and Hawkgirl because neither of them... I mean, Hawkgirl has much less representation because Hawkman, um, I do remember being in uh, Smallville. And I guess I guess it's, uh, hmm, it's an odd balance because Hawkgirl was all over the Justice League stuff. So I guess she has actually had more representation than Hawkman. But live action speaking, she... I don't believe was in it at all in Smallville. I'm pretty sure Hawkman was. She may have been in it because it's you know, it's Hawkman and Hawkgirl. So she was probably in it. Most likely, I just can't remember. But I don't want either of them to die. I mean, I feel like that's just the case. They don't mention it, but they kind they have to pick him up from another you know another timeline. Even though he's not the one that can deliver the fatal blow, which we found out, it has to be. You know, he went from one of you guys have to do it to. It has to be Shara, so I thought that was kind of cool that they did it that way. Um, at least with the specific device, uh, or, well, weapon, I shouldn't really say device. But the way they did it in this episode as well kind of says that they can only kill him with certain things because, you know, with the final blow, and what this kind of goes with him having, like, this weird, not exactly specified, but enhanced body where he's immortal, so... He can take a fatal wound, he can be destroyed, but the only way we saw him die before was full on, you know, he was just vaporized, and that was it. So, this was the first time we got him actually being hit with something and, like, stabbed straight through, and it did nothing to him. It was basically like, oh, I used up one of those lives, you know, just in that one, you know, one attack, because I would assume that was, like, right into his heart. So it was like, oh, well, that's one of those lives gone too bad, but I, I, you know, I still have hundreds more, so, yeah, I don't know, I, I mean, it was, it was just crazy, I couldn't believe that they did that, I thought for sure, when she was going up at him, I'm like, I know they're not going to kill Vandal Savage, but, he, and she's not as strong, like, she just hasn't had enough training, she still hasn't gotten to the point where she's as capable as she could be as a fighter, and I was like, she, she's definitely not going to win, like, even that first charge, I kind of laughed, because it was admittedly a little funny, but that first charge, he was just like, and she just fell on the ground, and like you could just hear her helmet like hit the ground and fall off. And I was like, that was kind of funny, but I shouldn't be laughing because I'm kind of worried she might actually get killed too. But it kind of blew my mind. I couldn't believe they did that. The second time uh, something crazy has happened in one of the shows this week. I won't mention what the other show was, just to you know keep suspense open. If you guys haven't uh, watched uh, Flash and Arrow yet, but. They've been doing some. They did some crazy stuff in one of the other shows as well. They've been doing some crazy stuff this whole week. It's just been crazy for the DC shows. But great second episode. I can't wait to see what they do with episode three. I hope Carter comes back. I really do hope that they 
decide that they'll jump into another timeline and save them, they can't go back in time. And they mention that in this episode early on, Rip mentions, like, we can't go back in time to an event that we're involved in and stop it from happening because time will, like, collapse in on itself. Like, a, um, I think he said, like, a cyclical, well, a vortex is a circle. But he said something about vortexes, and it was, you know, um, it's like, you know, it sounds a lot cooler than it really is from uh, Adam. But I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I hope they bring him back. It would be very surprising if they didn't. But it would also be kind of cool. It would be crazy because, you know, shows don't really kill people off too often. And this is only episode two. Technically episode one because it still counts as the second half of the pilot still. So, you know, I don't know. It, it was just crazy. I couldn't believe it happened, but... It definitely did, and we'll just have to see what happens. I mean, they can pick him up from another timeline, but I don't know if it means something. I mean, ultimately, he still chose them from that specific timeline, so I don't know exactly what that means, but who knows? We'll see what happens. I mean, if they continue to reincarnate, then they should be fine. They might actually be able to save him from the future timeline where Savage actually does take over the world, if they can do it that way and he just, you know, they just go and pick him up from the future and be like, hey, you know, we, we, we kind of lost you before, so we, we really need your help because Savage, as you saw from your future, you know, is just all messed up and that's what we need to stop. But I'm assuming he also chose them from those different timelines because that's the only timeline he knew that they were all in as well, so... I don't know what to expect, but I really love this episode, of course, want to know what you guys thought about it, so please comment below, let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts, and naturally, I have to ask what you guys thought about us losing Carter in this episode, and if you guys think they're going to just jump into another timeline, or jump into another time period, and just get him in a different life. I, it just seems like the perfect answer, and it would be interesting if they picked him up early, and it was before he realized that he was Hawkman, and then Sharar would have to teach him um, about, you know, their history and stuff like that. And then he'd be learning, and she'd be the teacher, but she wouldn't be as experienced as Carter was, you know, before he died, or that version of him died. So, it will be interesting if that was the dynamic they chose. I just feel like they have to pick him up, unless they have been, you know, playing us this entire time, and he was never meant to actually survive uh, through the series, and he's just out. But I, I doubt that they're going to do that because, I mean, it's Hawkman. It's just how they've been playing it this entire time. It's like, oh, their relationship and this and that. They could do a couple episodes where they don't decide to do it, and Rip eventually agrees, and it's like, all right, we just have to figure out how we're going to do it or, you know, something like that. But for now, it's just a crazy, crazy moment. But I definitely want to know what you guys thought about his death and his possible future. So please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.